We spent a lot of time talking about all the potential winners from the income uh, incoming Trump administration. But on down like today, you know, down day at least for the industrials, it's good to remember that there are some real potential losers, too. I'm not talking about the companies he goes after on Twitter. We know that the president-elect is thinking about trying to impose some kind of cross-border tax on imports, and that's bad news for companies that make things overseas, then ship them here. Witness how Trump just tweeted that he'd uh, hit Toyota with a big border tax if they build a new plant in Mexico instead of here, and Toyota's not even an American company. So how worried does this make investors? We'll just take one look at Constellation Brands, Long and Kramer Fave, STZ, the terrific alcohol company that's the world's largest purveyor of premium wines and the third largest brewery in the United States. I've liked Constellation for ages because a few years ago they managed to acquire the U.S. rights to Corona, Modelo, Pacifico, world's most popular Mexican beers, going like just mad, something I know from Bar San Miguel, my own small plate Mexican restaurant in Brooklyn. But this is exactly the kind of business that some people think could be uh, punished by an import tax. See, Constellation just reported a really good-looking quarter today. Monster 24-cent earnings beat off a buck 72 basis, inline revenues, but the stock got slammed down 10 bucks. The reason? I don't know, perhaps it's because management didn't necessarily be able to give you the kind of clarity that you need about the Trump's protection impulses, or also Goldman Sachs said some things that maybe the quarter wasn't as strong as it looked. Not clear. But I do know this. This is a stock that has gone up from 35 to 140 in a very short period of time. And that's what may be at work here. Profit taking. How worried should we be? It's a great company. But some people think it is not the kind of stock to own at this moment. And that's why we need to check in with Rob Sands, president and CEO of Constellation Brands. Learn more about the quarter and the possible damage that an import tax could do to his business. Mr. Sands, welcome back to Mad Money. Thanks, Jim. How are you? All right, Rob, I had to tell you something. Uh, how do you make a Mexican beer in America? I mean, in the end, aren't there some companies that, that just, there's nothing you can do. If you're making a Mexican beer, you can't make it in Colorado. Well, that's true, uh, Jim. But, you know, that said, uh, as you noted, uh, we had a fantastic quarter. I mean, just blew away everything, um, almost in every regard. Fantastic uh, sales results. But there is a lot of volatility in our stock as a consequence of the uh, aspects of tax reform regarding the border adjustability tax that you mentioned. So I think that is probably what uh, what we can attribute the volatility today towards. Well, but Rob, you're a man who puts his money where his mouth is. Now, you did spend a huge amount of time talking about it. You didn't duck it at all. But you also spent a lot of time talking about buying back your own stock, which indicates to me that you take a longer-term view. Well, absolutely. Um, you know, we did uh, note that uh, over the last couple of quarters, we purchased uh, over $800 million of our own stock. Uh, that's because we clearly think that it's uh, undervalued. And uh, we've done a lot of work on uh, the so-called border tax or tax or border adjustability. And, uh, you know, we think that there's uh, plenty of mitigating factors, either things that we can do or things that will, in fact, mitigate the tax, which makes it such that uh, we believe that uh, we can meet our mid and long term guidance of double digit EPS growth. So we're extremely confident that uh, no matter what the outcome of that is, that um, we're going to be able to achieve our goals. So we put our money where our mouth is and we're buying back our stock. So. All right. So let's say uh, that's the bottom pre line. President Jim. like Trump tweets, saw Sands on Kramer's mad money. That guy should be bottling his Mexican beer in the U.S. and using U.S. natural gas. What do you say? Well, you know, what I would say about that is, is it can't be bottled or made in the U.S. because it's not, uh, it's not a U.S. product. It's an inherently Mexican product. But that said, uh, you know, the whole border adjustability concept is about uh, not being able to deduct foreign sourced uh, work in process and uh, raw materials. So we have the capability of shifting uh, a lot of our either work in process or, or raw materials, things like natural gas to U.S. sourced uh, and increase the percentage of those items and therefore increase the percentage of cost of goods sold that would be deductible. Now, I think that that's pretty aligned with uh, what's trying to be accomplished 
uh, by the Trump administration and right. the Republicans. All right. Well, one of the things that happened. So we, was, we feel good about our position. That's why I, I did too. But you know, then, then oh, I, th I felt you answered a lot of those questions. Great of the call. And then a Goldman Sachs and also of, of some note, whom I've known for years, suddenly throws a monkey wrench in and says beer wasn't that good, and, and, and it's slowing. I, I don't know. I can read numbers. You can read numbers. I, I didn't see that in the quarter. Trying to figure out how the confusion came about. So uh, what uh, Judy Hong, Judy of uh, Goldman, and she's right. great, uh, is uh, talking about is uh, the fact that our Mexican beer depletion, sales to retail, fundamentally our sales were uh, up 10.7% following uh, last quarter where they were up about 14%. So okay. perhaps that was perceived as a slight slowdown. But that said, uh, last quarter we were overlapping uh, a quarter of the previous year where our sales were up 10%, whereas third quarter or this quarter uh, last year, our sales were up 16%. Uh, Rob, one last thing before I let you go. You guys are constantly innovating. You're constantly getting new labels. I happen to have a, a high-end Casa Noble on my desk here, tequila. I know you've done this with high-end whiskeys. You're not getting enough credit, in my opinion, for the innovation you're bringing to an industry that hasn't had innovation in 100 years. I just want to give you a minute to talk about the new stuff you brought out. Yeah, we've got lots of great new stuff, Jim. Um, we uh, The tequila that you mentioned that you've got there, which we uh, age in Robert Mondavi barrels. Uh, we recently acquired High West, um, one of the leading craft uh, whiskey, uh, American whiskey, bourbon, and rye distillers. Um, matter of fact, uh, named uh, whiskey uh, producer of the year by uh, Whiskey Advocate magazine. We just purchased a new brand uh, called... Uh, Charles Smith and their Kung Fu Panda Riesling was um, made the top 100 in Wine Spectator. Uh, and our own innovation, we're, uh, we're innovating new products like the tequila that you have um, all the time. So lots of great new stuff in our portfolio. All right. Well, it's terrific, Rob. I know the confusion. Look, you're straight out. You've always played it straight out with us. But remember, the stock has, the stock has quadrupled. And, and, and maybe sometimes people just want to take some profits. Rob Sands, Constellation Brands, President CEO, STC. Good to see you, sir. Yes, thank you. This one, you wait till it settles, okay? You wait till these people give up on it, and then you get your opportunity. That's happening right now. May have money's back into the break. Booyah! Jim Kramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.